everyone and welcome to Tokens in Heft. This is my 50 subscriber edition, so we're taking a look at the biggest game ever, Ogre! I think you might need to zoom out a little bit. Oh yeah, just kidding guys. It's Ogre! Ha ha! And as you can tell from the hat and the voice, Andrew is here helping me out. Because honestly, I don't own Ogre. I, I screwed up. He kickstarted it though, so he's got all the crazy ogreness. Including this signed thank you letter from Mr. From Steve Jackson, Jackson himself. Hold on a sec. Hold that up for a second. Whee! Lower. There we go. We are a professional organization. Oh yeah. But yeah, Ogre is Steve Jackson's very first game, I believe, from 1982. 77. 77? Ogre is older than me! As you see, there are two versions of Ogre right here. The, the most recent designer's edition. And this, a reprint of the original Ogre, released in 1977. Oh yeah, there it is, 1977. The original Ogre here, 295. didn't even come in this package or anything. Wasn't it originally like in a magazine or something? You had to cut no, it all it, out? It was that. Oh, it was, it was that just like this. It was that. It was, might not have been in the bag, but it was that little. It was that little booklet there. Yeah, I remember hearing that he might have sold it in his own like bags. Probably like old software, maybe. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I remember reading a fun story, I don't remember it all now, uh, but when you guys were getting this kickstarted, there was even a quick little thing about the artist who designed that classic front cover of Ogre, who set in stone what an ogre looked like. And he did it well. Holy crap. Um, you want to try taking the top off the box? Uh, sure, you want to dive into the box already? Oh yeah, you know, let's go over the other Kickstarter stuff. Alright, like, like we said, it was on Kickstarter. One of the things I got was the Ogre supporter. And notice how it says 2012 on there. Uh, the game was, however, too awesome for 2012. Didn't come out until 2013 because it was too successful. They got too much money and kept like, well, you gave us all this money and we made all these promises. We have to keep adding stuff and now the whole box has changed and then eventually the size of the box changed the size of the shipping containers. And also the size of the box necessitated this wonderful carrying case. The bag has not only two carry straps like normal, but a shoulder strap as well. It's wonderful and useful and necessary. Hold on a sec. I, I want to help people get a sense of scale. This thing can fit babies inside it. So, that's a can of Pepsi. <laughs> I mean, no product. The light's not the best, but it's taller than a can of Pepsi, and yeah. Wow, we could probably fit like a whole case of Pepsi or so in here, or two, case and a half maybe. Yeah. It's huge. Um, when they f when they were first coming out, Andrew sent me an email. He's like, "Look how big the box is." Because someone had sent Steve Jackson a picture of the box lid with their infant child inside. Mm-hmm. It was great. You know, baby, maybe two, a couple Pomeranians. Yeah. This is a game that can feed your whole family. It, this is a two-man job. Oh, yeah. And, yep. There we go. Oh, ogre. Ogre. I'm sorry, you're not going to see the back of the box today. <laughs> yeah, the... Uh... It's not going to happen. There we go. Let's keep the going. All right. As you can see, this entire thing is filled with these paper craft ogres, like just super tanks. Um, a little tighter. Yeah. Well, all the action, all the chaos going on here. Let me grab a good one. Uh, I don't want to show them Mark Six yet. Oh, you don't want to show them Mark Six? Well, no, let's go with Classic Three or Two. Uh, this one. Whatever. Goes. Yeah. That is basic ogre. It's weird because I'm zoomed in, but yeah. That is our basic ogre. They are they're, they're nice little guys. Well, it's the They it's were fun to put together. Andrew and I, what did we spend? Like 45 minutes to an hour? Yeah. Putting together all the little it guys. Fun. It was fun. We're the kind of people that love that stuff. Yeah. Boop. And what we mean by basic ogre is in the canon in the game, because you can't have future tank warfare without a past of tank warfare. The mark that was I think the either the Mark III or maybe the Mark IV. The Mark I Ogre was just a super tank about what we've got now with an AI in it. Those... I'm not going to bother, but I know they're in here. Uh, it might be this. Yeah. It... Oh, wait, no, that's just... There are a variety of Ogres in various colors. There's Marks 1 through 6. six. Which... Which one's a 6 here? One of these suckers? The... Oh, yeah, the biggest. Sorry. The biggest. And that... Yeah, is... that... That is specific 
specifically a big old Mark Six over. Yeah, that is specifically a uh, 923K. Oh yeah, this one specifically, which is because of Kickstarter, the the its serial number is 923K, which is how much money they made before sales. Literally nine hundred twenty three thousand dollars plus change. I thought I was looking for these for the. Um, no, I thought I this was a Mark One. It's actually the Mark Two. Yeah, the Mark Ones are just tokens. Oh, that's right. The Mark they don't even get three dimensions. Yeah, they're they're like the uh, they're like the super heavies for uh, the other side, just red. All right, let's. Ooh, ooh, one one more thing. One more thing. Oh yeah, we gotta Vulcans. show off the Vulcans tank with giant grabby arms because grabby arms. They felt like it. There's also alternate. I apologize. Arms. We recently had a light bulb go out, and I have no replacements on hand. Yeah. So there's not as much light here as I'd like. They come with grabby arms, and they come with two Replace grabby arms. Replacement grabby arms. So they're yeah, out like this, this, or they're moved in a little bit. It's great. And and the these trays are known as the ogre garage, and the part everything's supposed to go in a certain section for the most part. The Vulcans actually there's little like uh, what's it called slopes. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's little slopes on them more. so that their arms aren't going to get pushed around or anything. They're not going to snap off or get bent. Here's the Mark 1. Yeah. Yeah, here's a little Mark 1. And because they realize that some people want to do really big games, here's a token for Mark 6. Show those in comparison. Oh, yeah, yeah let me see that. <laughs> so that's a token for a Mark 6 ogre. Here's Mark 1 ogre. <laughs> Just like in comparison. It would run it over. Oh, yeah. Which, Which is, is totally in the rules! It is a mechanic. It is, a, is actually one of the best ways to take out enemy ogre class because their life is their treads. And running, thin, running into things, running over things is the best way to take out treads. Alright, let us remove the garages. Uh, this part's going to be a little messed up because... Ah, uh, yeah, we're traveling and stuff. Yeah. Well, Thanks. yep. This... The main ogre map is, well, half of the main ogre map. The other half is there. Should we move the box? I don't even know. Ogre's too big for anything to work. We're going to move the box in a sec, because I'm going to want to show yeah. how it actually works. This is basically the first map you're supposed to use. It is a and it's the basic player. classic map that you would find in the little original baggy version. Yes. Or, I believe they sell this now, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can buy over pocket editions. If the front of this is correct, it's three bucks. Yep, that's what that was the promise. It was two ninety five in two thousand in nineteen seventy seven. It's two it's two ninety five now. So ogre is a game. It's a small army versus a single super tank, and that's really actually fair. I feel sorry for the army in most cases. Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. What have we got here? Rules and everything, and also uh. The okay. scenario books. Oh, scenario books. Now, one, one of the other interesting things is you can only have man versus machine so many times before it gets a little, you know, kind of, almost, I won't say stale, but, you know, kind of in that direction. You want to mix it up a little. So, they started making uh, rules for what they call GEV, Ground Effect Vehicle. Which is their name for hovercrafts. Yes. Um, it shows up a lot in some sci-fis. But, uh... And so that's what these other maps are for, more for the GEV, which is more tactics and unit based instead of just one super tank. And not but, just the maps. Yeah, they're completely interchangeable. But yeah, wow, I forgot. The Each of these is two trays, and then yeah. so there's wow, yeah. there's eight of these, and, and then under be linked together. Under them all are tiles and well, and the tokens. units and tokens and all Bats. this other stuff. For a regular ogre, you use that first map we showed you. You use one ogre, and then you use a, si a, a comparably sized force of regular guys. Road cut. Road cut. I mean, <laughs> for GEV, GEV is like, it's a whole big thing. It's so, a, it's you have a, all of these maps. There's all these little things, like, like these, these are tokens just to adding little bits of, like, wall. Wall and dirt and dust. And, and trenches, and like, just little obstacles, like, tokens for vehicles getting stuck, uh, 
There's so much to GEV. We haven't even done, like touched it yet. It's yeah. a little daunting. Yeah. And but regular well, ogre is really fun. Oh yeah, it's great. Even even when you suddenly like, it's also really wonderful because not it's not just your strategy. It's also there's luck involved because you're rolling dice. And I remember one of the, I remember one of the games we played. Dice, Which one are you looking for? Dice. There they are. <laughs> Amidst the sea of. The box doesn't say completely together. Yeah. yeah, but everything still oh, everything still, stays in the box. There's oh, yeah, no way you'll ever lose anything. It stays in its general location too, so it's well made. We've got these lovely chunky ogre dice. Move them a little more towards the light. Yeah, I oriented those, right? Yes. Okay. More or less. I don't know. If you haven't, I'm not going to say it. Okay. Let's try this. Hopefully we'll see them. There we go. Yeah. That actually looks pretty good. Those are the... Fa those, those are, are the, the two factions? Yep. Factions. The red is ogre. Technically the bad guys. The combine. Yeah, that's the combine. I forget. Panier Paneuropa is the other yeah. guys. So I remember that one game we were playing when I... Stop your ogre, like stop your ogre just shy of range of the of my command point with the flying GEV. Oh yeah, he just he just rammed a guy into my ogre and I took out that last stinking tread point. Before, and before you could hit the command point. And stop me. Right. I maybe I'll splice uh, the photo in real quick here. And you guys can see <laughs> what that looked like. It was great. Because I have a picture of that. We even replaced the ogre with one of the guys in there is um, oh, blasted. Is a blown apart Mark III or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you can set that down. Yep. And you know, just to have it there. Because it's this is a great game. It is obviously not only a labor of love, but of, hey, let's be more awesome. Yeah. Who doesn't love giant super tanks? All right. Um, hold on a moment, and we will have we will get a little game set up and just give you a brief overview of how Ogre works. There's, it's there. It's it's one of those games that it's simple to learn. There's not a whole lot like to the mechanics of it, but there's so much depth and so much Ogre. It's so wonderful. It's great. All right, so we'll be back in a few. All right, and we're back with a bit of an Ogre board set up. Uh, we're using a little more than the basic stuff just to show off some of it. We got some, got a laser turret, got a short one here and a tall one here, and this and this are just kind of like little extra objectives or things to blow up. Yeah, probably if you're going into GEV, that those sort of things. You'll use those more. a lot more in GEV. Yeah. But this is basically to show off a lot of, a little bit of an example of what we met, said earlier when you have a small force versus an ogre, and it actually comes out even. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Ogre, yes I know, this is not an accurate setup in any way. Oh no, this is purely for demonstration purposes. Like the fact that we've got soldiers here, like these, these four tokens are soldiers. Both of, all of them are double-sided. They'll either have three, two, or one. The fact that some of them are marines and some of them say infantry, in Ogre doesn't matter. It does in GEV, I assume, but yeah. definitely doesn't in this. They have different movement rules or capabilities. Okay. Um, over here we have missile tanks. Each of the tokens for the tanks and vehicles is also double-sided. One side is standard with its movement rate or its attack, its range, its defense and movement. And then it has its disabled side, which has its modified defense. Sometimes it changes. These are the missile tanks, they've got long range. These are your friends against ogres, because they fire far and do well. Over here we have a super heavy tank, which is the closest thing pan-Europeans get to get to anything ogre related, except for extreme cases. What are those, lancers or something? Sometimes? I forget what their names were. Fencers. Fencers, that's it. Yeah, and then there's the doppelsawners. Yeah. Ooh. Anyway. Um, oh yeah, that's something we didn't bring up. The ogres are not piloted. The whole part of the terror of an ogre is the fact that they are. It's a machine. It's entirely it's an AI, and it's coming to get you. It does not get scared. It does not have morale. It will keep going until it cannot go any further. It is here to accomplish a mission, and you're in the way. The 
Fencer, he just showed up in the doppelsolder he mentioned, are kind of like ogres for pan-Europeans, but, but they're they actually have... staffed by probably a ton of people. Yes. It, the, you gotta answer weapons. Weapons must be answered or you lose a fight, and then that's not a war. Alright, so like I said, the super heavies, then the mobile howitzers, because you gotta have a mobile howitzer. It doesn't move much, it's got a movement of one, but it's got a range of six, which is... Really good. We'll go over the stats in a minute. Um, then back here, I've got a GEV PC, which is a ground effects vehicle personnel carrier. It, it, it helps, helps shuttle troops around. Yep, help move these guys faster than the tank moves so they can get ahead of it over and over again. Yeah, we'll talk about GEV movement too. Then we've got a heavy tank here. Um, it's got a decent, they've used to got a, you know, a decent balance between attack and, uh, movement. Yeah. And then back here, we've got an actual howitzer, which... In no movement. No movement. Not no real defense, but it shoots far and hard. And yeah, it's got a range of eight. I don't know if anything else. Uh, maybe missiles have a close range to that. Well, yeah, the the actual ogre missiles. Yeah, because ogres come with missiles. Yeah, and that is a terrifying thing because anything it gets within like this far of it, you can shoot. You can pop a mm -hmm. missile at it, and it's gone. But you can also shoot at the missiles before they're launched, which is a good idea. Yeah, you can. You, it's like Shadow of the Colossus when you've got a small army versus your Colossus. Yeah. But the Colossus is an automated tank. <laughs> I would play oh, that game. That, well, that <laughs> sounds really fun. Oh wait, we have played that game. It's Ogre! <laughs> um, and yeah. Stone Point, which is the target of the Ogre. Usually, it, some scenarios it has one hit, some scenarios it has a couple hits. It might actually have a little bit of armor too. Sometimes the easiest But generally the game is the Ogre wants to blow that up. And then leave. The other forces want to stop the Ogre from doing that. Yes. There is a way to get... There are various levels of victory. Um, if the ogre gets in, destro if the ogre gets in, destroys this, and leaves, complete victory for the ogre. Does it have to leave off this edge? Yes. It does have to leave off it has the to edge leave. it entered on. Yes. Which is usually, on this map, is the south edge. This is the north side, south side, yada yada. Um... Sometimes the best way is to just run over that command point because, like we said, running over things works. You yeah, you will lose a little bit of tread when you run over stuff, except uh, infantry. Yeah, because no, you as an ogre, you can just plow through infantry. It's fine. In fact, they have weaponry specifically to destroy as much inf infantry as possible as they're running them over. It's good times. All right, let's do. Let's just talk about a quick bit of gameplay. Oh, um, one last thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You may notice this guy over here. This is a token for a Mark I, but is a special token for a Mark I, specifically the Black Rose Mercenary oh, Company. I'm going to try and zoom in on it. Andrew, can you figure out where that is? Uh, Hirsch? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Could you put the guy over there? All right. Black Rose Mercenary. Yeah. These are guys that decided, hey... We want like we want to fund an entire sheet of tokens in uh, in Ogre, and then they did, and now there's the Black Rose Mercenary Company. They're actually listed separately on the Kickstarter uh, supporters on the box. Yes, uh, from what I from what I know, they just decided, hey, who wants in on this? Let's rock. Which in itself is pretty freaking awesome. So yeah, actually, I want to say zoom in a little bit because we want to talk about all right. Andrew, do you want to help talk about stats while I hold this up for a camera? Sure. Uh, none of this is going to work well. Alright, we're just going to zoom in again. Fair enough. Ogre has made things a little more difficult than usual. Alright, cool. Oh, Ogre is just bigger than you. So, there's the mobile howitzer. Alright. The M here is for uh, mobility. How, how many squares can move a turret? Or how many hexes, as it were. Um, the D is its defense, its armor. Um... That affects how well things attack it. Then over here we have its uh, range and attack value. I'm pretty sure the first number. I think the first. The number. first number is its power. Yes. And yes. Because the these because the infantry only has one. Yes. The uh, first number is the uh, like attack power it has, and then you've got the range. The howitzer is a si the mobile howitzer is a six six. The standard howitzer is a six eight, which means it has an attack power of six. And a range of eight, and that can even punch through an ogre when you hit it right. Speaking of ogres, gonna have to zoom back out now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to change things around. Fair enough, because that's roughly where it's centered. Hey, perfect. 
Wow, that actually works out pretty well. For the most part. Yeah. This is an Ogre Stat Sheet. You... The game comes with a nice sheet. It's double-sided. Has... Each of those squares is a specific type of Ogre. Uh, so you'll only be using... Couple one ogres. of those squares at a time. Well, some battles, some battle sets do have multiple ogres, and those are insane. Also, because there are ogre and GEV rules where you use inches instead of hexes, there's a completely separate sheet that's the same thing, but with all of the ranges in inches instead. Which I thought was just a nice little helpful thing. Let's zoom back in and talk about some ogre stats real quick. Yay. Andrew, you want to help me out with that? Okay. You see this big chunk over here? Um, it says uh, 56 tread units. That is the life. That is the lifeblood of the ogre. As long as it can move, it's a threat. And as it as it as the uh, the number over here is its current movement rate. Once you like, once you lose that many treads, you down you're down to that movement. So for this one, it's every 16. Yes. Um. Different ogres have different amounts of tread, and that will change what levels their uh, at what levels their uh, movement yeah. will drop. Their general mobility and when it changes. Yeah. Up here, we've got the main battery. It says attack four, range three, defense four. The main battery has a defense because you can shoot at it, and that is what you need to do. You yeah. To ogres are you can think of them like a collection of various systems you're trying to take out. Yep. Take it apart piece by piece because one because the whole thing is just too damn big. Over here, the secondary batteries uh, has its stats. Um, I guess they'd be like over here and stuff. But then you've got missile racks. Um, some of the like we mentioned the missiles earlier. Um, and with the missile racks, every time you fire one, you also check one off. Which missiles do not regenerate; they just attack six, range five. You have a set number when you start. Fifteen interior missiles, three missile racks. Oh, hey, I didn't notice that missile racks too. Yeah. The, yeah, that's the Mark IV. Um, the Mark IV has three missile racks, which means it can fire three missiles a turn. Um, it has 15 missiles, has eight anti-personnel. That's what we were talking about, where it destroys actual just, you know, personnel guys. These get ripped to shreds. Yeah. It, They've just got, like, they're lined with guns that just yeah. shoot out any infantry. You don't even have to roll, it's just, how many, like, how many am I killing this time? Yeah, pretty much. Um... I, and, it, and it has down here a size of 8, which matters... Oh, can you see that? Yeah, there we go. Size of 8, which matters when you're running things over. Oh, yeah, that's where that comes in handy. Yeah. There's also something that's AU, and I don't know what that means. It might be build points or something like that. Yeah, I think it's build points. For when you're actually putting together a, an army to just field out, you say, well, we'll have this many... This yeah, much or if you're, just, if you're not doing a set scenario, you can just be like, alright, I'm bringing out... This ogre, which is like 25 AU, which means Something. you have the, yeah. I um, forget exactly right now. Yeah, or there'll be campaigns with variable builds. It's just like, okay, you have, pick this much, oh, pick this many points of ogre. Pick this many points of soldiers. Pick this many vehicles. Go. Yeah. And well, so that since the sheet has like nine things on a side, and there's a lot going on, and you might not always want to like photocopy them out or something, though that's totally an option. You can also, just in old school ogre style, write it down. Let's zoom out a little bit. Old school gamer style. This is actually two different ogres I've written it down for, but yeah, you just kind of replicate everything here. It's not that big a deal. I don't do boxes for treads, but as we pointed out, Andrew and I already discussed this, and. You've got a few minutes to set this up while your opponent. your opponent is setting up like 30 different units. Basically fills half the board with soldiers with which to it's attempt to stop. It's pretty dense with uh, opposing units. Until the ogre actually gets in range and things just start getting mowed down. It is so fun. Alright, how does combat work? Dice. I remember that. But I mean, hold on a sec. Well, whoever, like... This is the most important part of Ogre, Andrew. Combat results table? The CRT. Uh, that's the worst shot you'll ever see. One of them. There you go. The combat results table! Yay! This is how you figure out everything in Ogre. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty simple, and I forget it now, 
But if you play two games in a row, you'll remember it that second, second game. Like, second turn, you'll start Yeah, second or up. third turn. Yeah, you just, especially... Yeah, because you're firing a bunch of stuff each turn. Oh. Yeah, you pick it up really quickly. It's very simple. It's just a 6x4 grid. Or 6x5. Yeah. It's just, you know, you, you take the difference of what you've got... And you go. Well, it's not the difference, it's the ratio. Yeah, the ratio, that's what it is. So, let's see. There, like, when he showed you, there was, there was only three, there was only three possible results on this table. Um, here we go. Yeah. Zoom in a little bit. Gotcha. Three possible results. N, E, no effect. D, uh, disabled. X, for destroyed. If something that's already disabled is disabled again, it's destroyed. Mm-hmm. If something, well, if something that well, no effect. That, is that's it. Effect. No effect is just just that. There's nothing special about it. Yeah, that, that, that's the stages of, of ogre. Um, and lower on this sheet, we've got like a size table, which helps you figure out uh, ramming damage, general turn sequence. Very useful. The other side, the we don't need it as much, but it's got all the terrain effects we could ever want. It's also got the nice little. He uh, it shows the hex. It, it explains that these fiery pits are in fact impassable terrain because yeah. it's a fiery radioactive pit. Yeah, everything on this map that's a terrain feature you cannot cross. You can't drive into the fiery pits and all of these little ridges are impassable. Unless Except for the ogre. Or ground effect vehicles. Oh, GEVs can do it too. Yeah, because they fly. That's something else I want to mention. GEVs, their swiftness comes from... Not touching the ground. Hold on a sec, we keep moving stuff around. Boop. Let me zoom on him real quick. Whee! Alright, so you see how he's got this movement. It's two numbers. It's three, then two. That means in the regular movement phase with everything else, they move three hexes, or up to three hexes. Then, I forget exactly what point in the turn, and it might actually be here. Second At the very, basically the very end of the turn after the fire phase, the GEVs all get to move second. their second movement. So this guy moves three spaces, does whatever he's doing, maybe drops off troops since he's a transport, and then at the end of it, he moves two spaces to get the heck away from that ogre. Before it can turn. And or, if you're Andrew, you ram the ogre and take him out, and I lose. <laughs> that was such a great move. It was like, so great. You, you can picture it in your mind, this just GEV, this one guy just coming at it, and the ogre is just like target sighted. Boom! It was great because I had had it back next to my command point for like a turn or two because I'd run out of infantry. Yeah. Like where I was, my infantry were keeping pace with you, uh, with no like, because you were down to almost all your treads, and I just I just pulled my uh, GEV back in case you know I needed it, and I'm just like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I can ram him, and then I'm just like, you're in range, wham! It was great. Still had guns left, but he couldn't move, so. That ogre counts as dead. Yeah. Oh, it's so wonderful. Ogre is a ton of fun. Um, I don't know if I can even recommend you getting it, because I don't know if you can buy it anymore. Yes, you can. Um, you can buy the standard edition. I think so. I'm not it, sure how different it is from the designer edition or the Kickstarter designer edition, which is special. Yeah, like, Andrew's edition has a bunch of extra stuff. It came with, like, what, four extra sheets of tokens the size of the ogre box. Just shrink-wrapped onto the back. Yep. I was like, we're going to zoom out if we're just going to talk about general stuff, because yeah. there's so much ogre. There's so much ogre, and it's so wonderful. The game itself, like on a table, as you can see, doesn't really take up that much space. You can play this on most sized tables. You're not rolling a ton of dice. This is it. Like, each side only ever rolls one die. At a time. At a time, per attack. You know, it's... It's all pretty simple and self-contained. You just need another table or two to hold the box and the box lid and the ogres you're not using. It almost doubles as its own as its own table, but it's not quite tall enough. If you can get a copy of Ogre, definitely get a copy of it. There's the little pocket edition, which is certainly recommended. It's the same game. It's still tons of fun. It's the classic game. Yeah, I don't know where it went into. It might be under one of the garages. Probably. But... Yeah, it, it's what start. It's it's called Pocket Edition now, but that's what Ogre started with, and then it became this monstro this ogre sized monstrosity. It's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, uh, one thing I do want to mention. I'll have to zoom in again to show this. Hope no one's getting motion sickness. 
Uh, the units all come in different, like, classifications. And they're all slightly different And they're sizes. all slightly different sizes. There are three classes, and actually you can see them, with a line in a hex, you can really see... How much they fill it. Yeah, like, these two guys are all the same size class. He's actually technically the biggest, because he's, an, he's an, a Mark I Ogre. Oh yeah, something to mention, Ogres only take up one space. They only take up the front space, but... The rear space doesn't... They're not actually physically there. You can put units there. It's just that they're more, it's more fun this way, and it adds it's, to the intimidation factor of having their ogres. presence, because yeah. technically the ogre is also, like, a kilometer long. Yeah. That's the size of the That's hex. the thing. Each hex is supposed to be a kilometer. Yeah, I forgot about that. Is, or, or some unit. But as you can see, we've got the biggest size. We've got a slightly... This one doesn't take up quite the same amount of space, like total space. Yeah. It's technically a heavy. This one and this yeah, one are the same kind of size. Yeah, then we've got another grades. one, and then we've got our smallest ones. Well, no, that so that. visually, you can kind of tell what kind of stuff you've got going on. Yeah. And also, it helps for cleaning up later when yeah. you just stack everything together. I'm like, oh, wait, you're in the wrong spot. Oh, it's all the same size goes in that thing. Yeah. Ogre is awesome. I don't own it, unfortunately, but Andrew and I have played a couple times, and I love it. It is great. It's a ton of fun. It's it's so simple and easy to get into, especially because the set, especially if for a new player, you just hand them the ogre because they don't have to worry about choosing troops or anything. You can worry about that. You can choose. You can try and go a little easy on them, but not too easy because they're they are an ogre. Yeah, you they're see. most likely if you're if the person playing Pan Europa isn't thinking a lot, they're gonna. If lose. you're not really on your toes as the uh, non-ogre player, you're literally going to get run over. But if the ogre player is not paying attention, if the ogre player is just not wrecking your units, they're going to lose because you'll just pick them apart. You will slowly get it, yeah. You know, it, but I mean, for a starter, I would say hand them the ogre just because it's... It's simpler. It's it, simpler. All, yeah, all this stuff on the sheet might be intimidating, but it all makes sense. Like, the one's like a set of... It's, it, it's a very simple game to understand. Yeah. Once it gets rolling, it's it's understandable. It's oh just, yeah. By the end of the first turn, any new player is going to be pretty up to speed on how everything works, yeah. what you're doing. It's just a great simple little game, and I love that. Not only did, did Steve do the um, the Kickstarter just to get it going again, just to have the project there at all, but the fact that. It was so successful. It was so successful, and it was so very successful that it netted this monstrous box that's just packed full of stuff, these custom ogre garages, and we can't really show it to you, but underneath each of these things, on the undersides, maybe not that one, because some of them are generic, but on the underside of a lot of them... It says the Mark V. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it because yeah. of the reflection, but yeah, it actually says like what type of ogre goes in there, and has a bit of a diagram showing how you might want to orient them. Uh, it's such a nice product. And that's not all. On top of all the stuff that Andrew got with this, he also got two pins, one for each faction, which, mm -hmm. of course, it's a review. Something had to have been forgotten. I'm happy it was that of all things. Yes. Um, though they are very nice little pins. Me and Chris usually wear, the, like, when we're playing, we're like, yeah, hey, you're, on. you're playing Pain European, you're wearing this pin, I'll wear the Combine. And also... Let's go kill each other. Ogre, the Kickstarter for this made so much money... That Steve Jackson is working on Car Wars again. Which is another one of his classic games, and one of the th where games where we got, like, confetti mines. Oh, there's so much things. It's great. And what I, another thing I love is that, as one of the backers, you could have opted for a t-shirt that says, I made Steve Jackson work on Car Wars. Which is, I just thought was a fun, cute little thing. Because yeah. Steve Jackson, oh, yeah. he knows how to have fun. He's clearly a guy who's incredibly grateful for... The fact that he gets to just make games for a living. Yeah. He, he likes the fact that he can entertain us. Yeah. And we entertain him in return. Like, one of the ogres... Act, like, one of the ogres... Um, one of the ogres is named Bowser. B-W-Z-R. One of the big ogres. This one here, specifically. Is a Steve Jackson ogre, basically. Because, for those of you who have played various Munchkin games, you know that you never pick up a duck in a dungeon. Because it is a duck of doom. Literally, this one is named Doom and has the, I don't know and has the duck decal on it. Oh, no, wait, yeah. I think we should be able to get that. Yeah.
So yeah, Steve Jackson knows how to have fun and he knows how to let us have fun with this stuff. Um, so once again, thank you Steve Jackson for making this again. Yeah, and I would like to thank all 51 or two or so subscribers that I've got now for subscribing and sticking around and supporting me. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, I, I've been bugging Chris for weeks, months to like- Is it time to do over yet? Is it time to do over yet? I'm like, I want to hit 50 subscribers. I want over to be a big deal. It is a big deal. And then just the other day I noticed I was at 51. So I'm like, all right, we're doing this. Whee! So yeah, thank you, Steve Jackson. Thank you, Kickstarter supporters. And thank you, people who subscribe to my channel. You guys are awesome. And I love all of you. You're this fantastic. Is, this has been Tokens and Heft. Uh, with my special guest, Andrew. Thank you to you, too. Thank you for having me. And I've been Lincoln. I will see you guys next time.